नमस्कार वेलकम बैक डियर लिसनर्स एंड व्यूअर्स आई एम हैप्पी टू टेक यू थ्रू द रेस्ट ऑफ द आइडिया ऑफ हाउ टू बी अ स्मार्ट टीचर टीचिंग बाय टेक्नोलॉजी लॉ आफ्टर हाईलाइटिंग द बैकग्राउंड एंड सिग्निफिकेंस एंड आल्सो द ब्रॉड आइडियाज व्हिच कम विद इन दिस डिसिप्लिन एंड हाउ टू develop interest let me take you through how to divide and demarcate our lectures so uh, you can divide your lectures into sessions and these sessions can be based on the level of the program and the outcome that you are expecting uh, now taxonomy of learning varies from undergraduate course to postgraduate course in undergraduate course uh, knowledge is given 60% weightage skills are given 30% and values are given 10% whereas in post graduate course knowledge is given 70% and skills are given 30% in which values are embedded because they are senior students so the weightage in the concept in the lecture theme in the syllabus will be broad topics or concepts can have what is biotechnology what is the innovation how is law regulating these innovation what are the different facets of law in interface with biotechnology so that will take 10% of the time suppose you have a two credit course then out of 30 lectures three lectures are dedicated to this if you are having a three credit course then out of 45 hours you will be dedicating about four to five hours on this then you talk about the national regime which is indian law where you may have host of case laws and then you may have different legislations like national biodiversity act state biodiversity act state biodiversity authorities farmers rights uh, legislation you may be looking at patent law you may be looking at other related copyright and uh, 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 trademark law which has a bearing on a product in biotechnology aside from regulations which are related to standardization of biotechnology enterprises and their compliances at the international level the law which is there deserves 30% of the weightage in which you are looking at different treaties such as the rio summits uh, biological diversity conservation convention and uh, you may be looking at trips and you may be looking at trips plus developments in terms of patent term extension etc given to pharma products and then you are looking at different case studies different examples of companies different examples of business models and how the law has help them regarding uh, multiple multinational agreements for example if you look at the carter gina protocol which has come as an addition to the convention on biological diversity it talks about how live modified organisms or genetically modified organisms have to be transported from country to country where the safety measures have to be taken it has to be uh, only after the receiving country gives prior informed consent so that is one international standard Uh, then within europe we have european union directives regarding biotechnology products to be imported or exported or genetically modified crops to be brought to the country products which are having genetically modified crops for example corn which is genetically modified out of that you can create breakfast cereal so then they have to do in some european countries you have to say that uh, the, it has to label saying that this contains gmo this is called gene labeling so now we have green labeling to indicate vegetarian and non vegetarian but biotechnologically informed regulations which are environmentally sound which talk about gene labeling because these genes have the potential to harm the biodiversity which is in that area or they may even harm human health so based on scientific data this is done so here we when we plan these sessions whether it is 30 sessions or 45 sessions we will be dealing with one sub topic of a broad topic of these three and then uh, at a time we will be splitting it into different parts and we are discussing and we have to be very mindful in distribution of our lecture sessions in each lecture session on the topic that you have taken you have to speak about the previous session or some general development of that day to hold the attention of the students and also to check them if they have studied then after the session is over also you have to keep some time for reflecting and recalling what has been taught that day and discussion on the pre session reading can begin in the beginning and at the end of the session you can have a quiz on what you have taught 
or you can divide a case into different groups and make them discuss or give an article and ask them to read in the class because many a time students don't do the pre class reading uh, only few do that so in the class again you can make them not to miss that experience and then your session can be for 40 minutes out of the 60 minutes suppose your session is for 45 minutes then you always keep your session uh, minusing some 10 or 15 minutes for all these three parts then at the end of the lecture, you talk about what you have taught and what is going to be the next lecture. So the, uh, while lecturing, how do you design your lecture? I'll be telling it later on. So what teaching aids are to be used? Aid must be aiming at supporting your teaching, which we do with PowerPoint presentation. We don't read from the presentation. We have the clues. We would have thoroughly studied. We would have had a support notes with us with which we explain the points. In online mode of teaching, we can use online platforms like MS Teams or Google Meet and Zoom. You, you can even record part of your teaching in online mode into a video and play it because that gives a variety and that gives an asynchronous way of teaching and students can always go back to it and your lecture records also should be available. And any video which you have in YouTube or in specialized site, you can download and you can show. You can create your own video with the news clippings or with different opinions so that students remember better. Even animations can be used. So when you're doing your PPT or your video, have very few information and don't cram too many lines or words. They say six lines and six words to the point and always related to the lesson plan which has been circulated. In the beginning of the uh, semester only, we circulate our lesson plan. Make it interesting and attractive with color combination, different fonts, and the layout uh, should be appealing to the symmetry uh, because human brain is always uh, having a weakness for symmetry. So what are the different recommended readings? We have great writers like uh, 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 Philip Grubb, and then we have Alia Douglas, and then we have Nicholas Allen. So these books are available. These are very high quality books. Then we look at Ministry of Science and Technology's information leaflets, which tell us what is happening on the ground level, whether it is beta brinjal or beta cotton. Some of the books that we have, uh, we have shown here, like uh, Jamshi's book, or we may be having Rappel's book, or we may be having Nomo's book, uh, so all these authors like Rappel, etc., they are referring to biotechnology in the environmental context. Then a series of articles. Aside from that, we have case laws also. I'm showing you how one session of one hour has been broken down. In the first quarter of the session, previous sessions recap is done, as I told you, for five minutes. In the second 15 minutes, we are looking at background and stages of evolution of biotechnology, giving examples of Bhopal gas tragedy and endosulfan tragedy. So these are case studies. We have facts, we have reports, which we have synthesized and brought to the class to discuss. And after that, we summarize, we're raising some questions. So here we have used certain books like the Cohn's book, Kaysen's book, Rajendra K. Jain's book on uh, interconnection between American and European approaches to biotechnology regulations. Uh, that chapter I have authored. So this is how you can make your session very interesting and give them reference literature to read or in the class you can divide them and make them a reading group and give them a set of questions, different set of readings. After 10 minutes, they'll come and give the summary. In that way, both the reading groups, both would have read at a time without actually reading. So that kind of reading and summary is one. We also have a technique called small group learning where they can be uh, met with online or offline in small groups and in small groups they discuss each case and then they come back and present it reconvene to the class so when we are giving illustrations how do we give the illustration i'll give you one illustration patent protection case studies how do you understand innovation in this case and how do you understand the ethical argument of violating the fabric of life by playing God and how you teach the biotechnology's technical dimension of RDNA technology. So we have number of cases. I use about 32 cases. I have highlighted some cases, Diamond versus Chakravarti case, Ex parte Hibbert case, JM Agricultural Incorporated case, Harvard Onkomo's case, Funk Brothers case, Parker Davis case, Mayo case, and Diminako case, and the latest is the Myriad case. 
Now the interesting part is in diamond versus chakravarti, it was the algae which was able to break down the oil particle, which was given the patent. So a life form in a unicellular form being given patent to this scientist Chakrabarti was the big controversy because they thought that then multicellular life may become patentable material as owned by somebody who makes little modification to what occurs naturally. So this is the US approach. Then we had ex parte Hibbard case where a modification was made to the plant. In JEM agriculture, it was to the type of the pulse which had to have additional tryptophan secretion. In Harvard Ankomo's case, the mouse which was able to generate tumors. So these different cases showed how patent slowly started advancing from unicellular form to the plants and then to the animal. Uh, and in the myriad genetics case, the genetic information which came from human genome project was utilized to create certain products called as gene markers for breast cancer and myriad company was trying to sell it. And this was objected to by the molecular genetics and other non-governmental organizations. So the case is pending before US courts. When it comes to patentable subject matter and violation, we had a very interesting case from China, uh, Canada where a farmer Percy Schreimer's field uh, which was in the neighborhood of Monsanto's uh, variety of corn crops field. And Monsanto claimed that Percy Strymer violated or infringed the patent of theirs because some plants in his field were containing uh, corn crop which had similar characters to that of Monsanto variety. Now, uh, this case, uh, Percy Strymer contested, he challenged and he won the case and he won the right livelihood kind of Nobel alternative prize. So many farmers have challenged this seed manufacturing company's monopoly through patents. Now, traditional knowledge abuse uh, uh, by IP, we have uh, many cases like Haldi and Neem. Basmati case is not traditional knowledge. It is about geographical indication that Basmati is associated with India and Pakistan with the Gadwal region's unique uh, uh, properties. So also we have jasmine rice, which is from Thailand. So these were uh, their properties were synthesized in the lab and a Texmati variety was created and they went for patent. Then India successfully objected it and obtained. In patent infringement cases, mostly pharma companies fight suits against each other. How the molecules by them has been utilized by the other and they have infringed their rights. So we have a number of cases like this. And then there are class action suits in relation to biotechnology product where a large number of people would have been adversely affected. We had the famous case of thalidomide where the morning sickness tablet which was taken by women resulted in children born without limbs or completely spastic. So the company was uh, uh, sued and the company had to shell out all its profits. Hatch-Waxman case also is a case, uh, Hatch-Waxman Hatch is the legislation which is trying to protect people against such adverse impact on a class of people of a particular type of pharmaceutical drug. So uh, to cover the case law and such comparative regime, we have this IRAC analysis approach, the famous uh, Harvard Langdell approach, but we use it in the way that we identify the issue in the given case, we look at the legal framework, we look at the arguments on both sides and their legal, social, economic and political imp implications. And then the historical time frame between different countries where the cases have occurred, their context, their similarity and their dissimilarity in two countries. For example, how America regulates patent on life form, how European Union regulates, way, way different because Europe goes more by order a public which means public morality, which they inserted even in the WTO. So Moore versus uh, Regents of University of California is a very interesting case where the blood which was obtained from Moore's body was used to develop certain products and Moore challenged it, but he became unsuccessful because they said that he could challenge it for obtaining blood without his consent, but he could not claim part of the benefit that university received because R&D setup is a separate thing and it was not included in the agreement with Moore. However, subsequently, there were a number of other cases where the blood particles of certain people with immunity to Masabi tribe, for example, with immunity to certain diseases were taken. Those communities had uh, uh, submitted grievances against the infringement of their personality rights. So these are the parts of intellectual property right debate where even biotechnology can be involved. 
so a teacher has to have very deep knowledge and very good reading and updating themselves through various sources rafi communicate which is a rafi is rural advancement foundation international rafi you can read their uh, website and you can obtain such cases now how do we receive confirmation from students so either we poll with the students with the opinion whether they agree that there is a violation or not or we do post lecture mcqs or we ask socratic method type of questions we give post class videos readings and summary so that they come back studying next day and we ask questions now we also use uh, clinical modes like moots we had one moot code competition designed around biotechnology product in agriculture and about the scientific uncertainty principle and the right to compensation we had a mock trial organized in the class between companies like myriad genetic kind of case uh, the myriad case and then we have debates in the class in terms of whether certain subject matter is patentable or not we we don't have legal aid clinic as of now but uh, we have taken our students to the biotechnology department of the university to understand how they maintain their notes there were a couple of scientists who had patents we made them talk to the students about their own journey and how on field it is done uh, and then uh, quiz competitions are another we also have our incubator uh, dimensions whereby we make patent attorneys meet our students and discuss the possibility students have uh, when we teach students we use clinical mode of teaching and assessment where we use as i told you small group learning debates and then simulations they behave as if they are patent attorneys defending or challenging infringement or uh, uh, we do simulations of them sitting in a group of patent attorneys and then dividing it into parts like one does the prior art search and another does the documentation it's all all decided product but then that simulation is done under the supervision of a very very reputed lawyer and students get this workshop experience as if they are patent assistants or patent lawyers and then we have guest lectures from the patent scientists patent lawyers and also from the ministry or uh, patent office representatives we have reading groups we have moots mock trial as i told you and then internships the students are facilitated internship so you can have senior students internship experience brought to the class and challenging the current students and they can have group work as i told you and tutorials are another way of doing so we use these exercises to teach and we also assess the participation of students in this exercise so with the proper rubrics like what new readings they have brought what critical questions they have asked and how elaborate and clear and detailed is their presentation we also give own work to students you know how we do uh, like uh, they can prepare posters they can participate with teachers in research publication six of my master students published in scopus when they were studying biotechnology law it was possible because i raised the problems they made their assignment and then we modified them and presented at paper, as papers one of them is working here as a faculty another is in germany and the third one is in iim because of his sheer originality in connecting biotechnology to law so own uh, work can be all these combinations and sometimes virtual visits to biotechnology companies websites and analyzing and writing a report on those websites in a way matters like how i took them to the scientific department of our university or you can visit a biotechnology manufacturing unit or to a lab and observe the scientist and you ask how they maintain their logs in order to obtain patent what are the different kinds of rules and regulations and compliances that they follow so we also have expert resource persons this is very important in this field patent attorneys interdisciplinary experts i gave you the example innovation expert like marshall kasar we had uh, 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 arvin chinchure who was an entrepreneur and advisor to many entrepreneurs uh, who used to work with marshall kersar we have the advantage of national innovation center scientists coming here one of the scientists did her phd with me as a senior research fellow she is an expert in patent search so she used to do the demo and she used to make students do that how patent filing is done that demo is given and advocates defending patents talk about their strategies litigation strategies so the general guidance for new teachers like you after all this interesting uh, exposition is that first of all you be structured 
and you be disciplined and technically sound. You have to know the technology. You have to understand the technology. I still remember, I'm a BSc graduate, but when I was writing my master's thesis, in order to understand how the IP came into science of plant sciences, I went and uh, studied the entire Leninger book on biochemistry on my own with the senior teacher, which is usually studied by master's students. So you have to go and you have to burn your midnight oil sweat to understand technically what everything means. And then, uh, then even your 12th standard knowledge is enough to teach this, although I'm a BSc. And then making it interesting with multimedia, not simply showing the videos, but integrate them with the legal issues. Encourage interaction. This will make the class more democratic space and it will make them raise their curiosity, question, and they also feel they are heard and they are contributing the content to the class. The honors uh, uh, means the fourth year onwards students only get this course after they do their initial IP law. Therefore, encourage those students to for, uh, do some presentation on the content after you give the overview of the module in a seminar method. And then uh, bring latest resources and debates and examples. Students don't appreciate if you are not up to date because they are very up to date. Always case studies, case laws make it more interesting. Be enthusiastic, be very clear, use a good language, make it humorous sometimes and communication skills and uh, engage all students. Even the quietest in my class had to speak. And then be creative to team up with others for interdisciplinary field. As I had a scientist friend, I made her uh, bring our students and that was the best part our students liked. Keeping the class focused with a very good atmosphere, like how you see in this picture, uh, they are situated and then you try to be in the center. You don't be in the center, put them in the center. I used to divide them into groups, swap around the furnitures or take them out and make them sit in the veranda. We had a small building at that time and then they would bring back what they have discussed. And sometimes you can run that in the library also. Keeping now with the technology, with the COVID, we will be able to do it better with the technology. Have student doubts resolved. Don't leave it like that. If you do not know, then go back to a scientist, read more and come back. And then attend to student queries very seriously. You have to always ask for feedback, periodic feedback in the middle of the session after you've done 50% or uh, once or twice will really help you for improvement. Please understand, we are measured by our student success. So I'm today very proud to say that the year I introduced biotechnology law, I had a very rural student from Madras who came to do masters. And uh, then one student from Northeast, one student from Maharashtra, another from Kashmir. All of them are doing extremely well. And one is studying nanotechnology, the other studied agricultural genetic engineering, all studied in interface with the law, and they have now been in top class institutions. One of them ended up as a patent attorney, and she's advising the, a big company in innovation. So it is from law that they have moved. It is by studying this course that they were able to fine tune their existing potential and uh, make it big in their life. So I wish you all the best, and I invite more and more teachers to this community of teachers who teach law in the context of what our country needs the most, namely innovation and science and technology. All the best. And once again, thanks to LC Foundation. All the best.